Right, so there we have another Kaku Rhaegar defeated. Um, it's probably one of the more well-hidden ones, because you don't really realise that you can send a Wonder Liner up there. But you can, and you should, because obviously, Kaku Rhaegar, you, you want to complete those. Oh dear, something's coming. So basically, mission 6 here is basically just a run the hell away mission. It's pretty easy, um, I mean one of the biggest challenges you've got is kind of lifting that up and making sure that you get to the end of that plank to be able to do the wonder jump, um, but yes, then we have a really wonderful, let's see what I did there. <laughs> String of quick time events, which are pretty awesome, I have to say. Uh, and now this bit isn't quite as awesome because there are some gaps that you have to jump over. And while normally that wouldn't be a problem, um, you have that jump, which <clears throat> I thought I'd hit because my other wonderful ones managed to make it, but evidently Wonder Green and his uh, rotund body shape meant that I didn't, which is kind of annoying. Now, I believe that that is the um, quick time event that if you miss, you can get the conversation with Sylvia. Oh, Wonder Cheerleader to be more exact. But uh, you, you, will, you will get the joy of seeing that at a later date. Now, I think that that one to jump right there is basically the, the only Wonder Jump initiated by anyone other than Wonder Red in the entire game. Like literally, none of the other wonderful ones instigate a Unite Jump at all, ever. So go pink, do it for all the girls. Because, yeah, that's, that's totally, to totally what you're doing. <clears throat> and to totally not living up to the stereotype of the, the female ranger. That's something I should probably bring up. I, I, I will touch on it a little bit more when we get to um, Operation 005. Um, but one thing that this game has come under a little fire for, not that much, because obviously not that many people have played the game, but it's come under a little fire anyway, is for... <clears throat> Some people have called it racist, um... Others <clears throat> don't quite like the way it treats certain nationalities, which is a bit funny, really. And the, the reason it's a bit funny is because the game is basically taking the mickey out of stereotypes that you see in video games, in kind of your classic Super Sentai things. So Wonder Red is your token American good guy hero character. Wonder Pink is your token female character. Um, Wonder Green is the, the, the token... Well, 
He's part token French guy, and although that's not that common, but he's the token kind of goofball, and then Wonder Blue is the token lone wolf, and so on and so forth. So all of the characters kind of fit stereotypes, and the game uses those stereotypes because they are such a part of the medium that it's kind of existing in. But it's not doing them to uh, insult anybody who uh, fits into that. Um, if anything, it's, it's doing it out of love. It's kind of the whole... Uh, You, sometimes you openly mock things when you love them. So everything's kind of done... All of the jokes in this game are very tongue-in-cheek. Like, I mean, if you hadn't guessed that by this point, then there is something seriously wrong with you. Um, or, well, there's something seriously wrong with your sarcasm slash irony slash tongue-in-cheek senses. Because... The game is so completely and utterly ridiculous, and it's very evident that it doesn't take itself seriously at all, that you kind of should be able to tell that, kind of, things that would otherwise seem offensive, it's kind of just like, it, it's really not being done with any sort of malicious intent here, and that's plainly evident to see. Um... However, after that kind of massive quick time events, there's really a lot in this uh, operation. We get a rather interesting mission, and probably one of the well, the single best use of the two screen setup in the entire game, I would think. So we uh, get the coffin. Ready and raring to go. Step on the big yellow button. And we get to ride this thing and blow stuff up. It's awesome. So the front button does the laser. The two side buttons move, buzz, which you're gonna want to do, obviously avoid as much damage as possible, and then the back button allows you to jump. Now it, it doesn't necessarily kick up too much grief early on, um, but this mission is going to get a little bit hectic a little bit further we go into it, because you're going to be asked to deal with things on both screens. And while some may say that it's too much to deal with, I'd say that this is one of the instances where there is just enough going on on screen to uh, keep you occupied and thrilled, but not too much that it's unbearable, even when there's a fight going on the bottom screen. I mean, it particularly helps that um, I've, I'm using the setup of having both screens on the screen at the same time, that really does help in this situation. Less so in some of the other ones, but this one works. I think partly because there's the camera is set here. I think that's what's helping this section so much more than any of the other sections in the entire game that use the two screen setup. And I believe that this was pretty much the one thing that was very highly praised, um, well, like this mission style, at least here, was praised by critics. Because it's a very inventive use of the game pa gamepad, which you just don't see in any Wii U games at all. It does, however, go on for a little bit, and if anything, that's one thing that the wonderful 101 does get quite a lot of flack for, um, is that its unique, interesting segments go on a bit, and uh, well, go on longer than they really should do, because they get a little bit uh, tedious after a while sometimes. 
I say it, it, it's more so the case later on. Um, there's a mini game section in Operation Six, which is uh, notable for the fact that it, it goes on for far too long and thereby becomes tedious. But uh, this one, even if it's a little bit slow, it, it's pretty fun. Now, for the longest time, I thought that this was the Maglev stage. I don't know why. Um, so I just thought, you know, this seems pretty decent. Get through this segment without taking damage. That doesn't seem that difficult. Um, and then, no, it, it, it's 001B. It's zero, zero, and they're just like, oh. Either way, we are slowly but surely reaching the point where the operation is going to end, and we are going to uh, have to go into the boss, which is probably my least favourite boss in the entire game. Um, I mean, there is one slash two a little bit later on, which I am not necessarily a fan of in terms of playing them. Um, I love the idea, the idea is great, but playing them is a little bit of a pain. Although I've certainly improved since I first played the game at those bosses. Um, but this next one, I just can't stand. Um, it's probably, it, yeah, it, it is my least favourite boss in the entire game, so uh, look, look, look forward to the degree of hatred that is going to utter forth from my lips in the next part. Also, notice the shape on the ground. Draw it. You get stuff. Annoyingly, it does require you to be uh, very precise, and unfortunately, I am not that precise at drawing. Although, I did very, very well there. I'm so very surprised by how accurate that, that, that Unite Morph drawing was. Either way, we're basically at the end of the operation now, we've just got to uh, face one of these guys. You see, we hadn't met them just yet, and it- oh, I was correct, it is a get down. Get- like, uh, I'm assuming it's, it's kind of going on the whole get down on it thing. Um, I, I don't know. I, I- I would be completely wrong. Um, but there we go. Now, I found that the best way to kind of tackle this operation is to, uh, mosey on over to uh, the get down. If you move quick enough then the uh, spiky chudogu I don't I can't remember his name um, it can't follow you um, basically if you get over quick enough which then means that you can take care of the get down perfectly fine and uh, you, you, you are free to then murder this as uh, neatly as possible. Obviously, there are many other ways you can kind of take on this fight, but I, I found that, that that works. Although I don't know whether I did mention this when we were introduced to Unite Whip, I don't think I did, and um, basically the bigger you draw the Unite Whip, the more spikes you can pull off of enemies um, when you eventually do. Um, so you can get rid of his entire armour with two big Unite Whips, whereas it's going to take a lot more for anything smaller.
and with a quick little murder of some little chudo uh, of some little dogus, beg your pardon. Um, that's the end of the operation. Um, basically, all we need to do is just run up here, and we are going to get to the boss that I despise so 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 much. You first, um, I thought you could get something out of that, but I, you, you, you can't. Just run up. And we'll head into Operation 002C. Oh, God. Ugh.